Good evening, everyone. And I understand your eagerness to hear from Professor Varmus, and so I will try to be brief and concise, but I hope you will allow me to give some words of introduction on the WHO Science Division and uh, some of the work that we have produced uh, uh, related to genomics, and then uh, hand it over to Professor Varmus. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anna Laura Ross, and I am the head of Emerging Technologies Research Prioritization and Support, in addition to being the head of the Science Council Secretariat. And it's in this latter role that I've had the pleasure of working with Professor Varmus for uh, just under two years now. And it's been a, a real uh, a pleasure and a learning uh, experience uh, to work with both Professor Varmus and the entire Science Council. I will pull up my slides and I hope that you can hear me correctly and you can see the slides. I can hear the room slightly faintly, so I hope that the audio is sufficient. Uh, we can hear you well. If you could please go on slideshow. Yes, thank you. We can see Wonderful. You so thank you. So um, as I mentioned, I'll give a little bit of a brief introduction to the science division. I'll present, I think, four different documents that I think may be of interest to the audience and then introduce the science council. The Science Division, as some of you may know, is about three years old now, a little bit more perhaps, and it really stems from the process of the WHO transformation that was initiated by our current Director General, Dr. Tedros. And it was clear that Dr. Tedros wanted to ensure that science would be very much at the forefront and, and showcased it as having a critical role in the world, in the work of the World Health Organization. And so not only does the organization need to strive to normative and technical work of the highest quality, but also be ahead of the curve vis-a-vis -vis latest technologies, areas in research, science, and innovation. And of course, strive to be as agile as possible as a, as a large UN agency can be, data-driven, but also responding to the changes, changing needs. So the science division within the World Health Organization is a cross-cutting for core function. Our role is to really strengthen the link between research and action. We support both other divisions within the World Health Organization and member states to remain ahead of the curve in scientific advancements. And we help put the countries in the driver's seats to make sure that we remain aligned with the country needs. We work closely with the global community of researchers and scientists to help ensure that that linkage is very strong, uh, including working in areas and thinking about areas in slightly more upstream biomedical or even basic research than perhaps traditionally the WHO has done. Our vision is simply to harness the power of science and innovation to support the member states in achieving the health related. SDGs. And we do that through providing global, global leadership in translating the latest science, evidence, innovation, and digital solutions to improve health and health equity. A couple of notes that I think are, are helpful and really underlie the work that we do within the science division at the WHO. So one is joint ownership and accountability, and really thinking about how WHO and countries work together to achieve the vision and the mission and the goals. And importantly, it's in alignment with country needs and, and uh, thinking across different disease areas, across different divisions. And I think that these are also some of the principles that, uh, that characterize the Science Council. We have three principal goals within the division. The first one is to be forward-looking and to have prioritized global health research. We have a whole area of work, which is around horizon scanning and foresight, and it's anticipating scientific, technological, and epidemiological shifts. We also have a lot of work in setting a global research agenda, but also declining it at the regional and country level. And a critically important area is to strengthen the confidence in science. And I think that across the world, coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen that there's a huge area of work to, to increase the trust and the confidence in science. We have a couple of examples in this area, and I think that the Science Council reflects a lot of these goals, and, and of course, uh, Professor Varmis will speak more to it later. 
The second goal is timely and evidence-driven norms and standards that are updated in real time. I suspect that the audience here is familiar with WHO guidelines. I think that um, we are recognized in this normative uh, stance. But if we had to have a criticism, certainly what was happening in the past is that the cycle for the development of guidelines was a very lengthy uh, process. And this is partly because we have a very rigorous approach to analyzing the data and the evidence and to making then the recommendations. But we have to find a way to balance that rigor and that scientific rigor in, in developing the recommendations with something which is more agile, because otherwise, by the time the guidelines are produced, of course, there's new evidence that is being generated. So the science division has been paying a lot of attention to what we call sometimes living guidelines or clinical guidelines that are produced in a range of different digital formats that allow them to be updated or tweaked or adjusted as in real time as the evidence is being produced. The third goal is around the adoption and scale up of innovation and digital health. And so I think everybody will recognize the importance of digital health, and it's not particularly a new thing per se, but it was absolutely essential that the World Health Organization have a center of gravity within the science and division to be able to think about the adoption and the scale up of innovation and digital health. A word about the chief scientist, our inaugural chief scientist was Professor uh, Somya Swaminathan, who is indeed now uh, returned to India to carry on and pursue some of her own research interests. So we were absolutely uh, very lucky to have Professor Swaminathan guiding us through the creation and the setup of the WHO Science Division. And I would say that it's really together with Sonia, and I worked very closely with her, that we were able to conceive and set up for the Science Council. So I think a lot of credit to Sonia to having initiated this uh, very high-level eminent panel, which I hope will continue and to be able to serve uh, many other chief scientists uh, in the future. The current chief scientist at interim is John Reader, who is uh, making sure that the seat kicks, keeps warm and uh, keeping up the business running while we await the new incoming chief scientist, who is Sir Jeremy Farrar, who is slated to start in May this year. And so we're very much looking forward. And I suspect many of you will know that the genomics in general is an area of interest to Sir Jeremy Farrar. So I'm uh, confident that we will be able to pursue activities in this area. I'll now showcase quite briefly just four different documents that I think can be of interest to the audience. I'll go quite quickly because, as I said, I know you're eager to hear from Professor Varmus, but I'm very happy to be contacted offline or to share more information if any of these documents or areas really pique uh, um, your, your curiosity. So the first document is a global genomic surveillance strategy for pathogens with pandemic and epidemic potential. This document is really a 10-year strategy to strengthen and scale genomic surveillance for quality, timely, and appropriate public health actions in, in local to global health systems. The uh, strategy, which is a relatively short, so it's quite accessible strategy, but it's really thinking about how the pandemic has showed us that how important it is to have genomics, in the context of protecting public health and thinking about how we can mobilize genomic surveillance efforts in pandemic or that could be a pandemic or epidemic threat. So the 10 year framework aims to strengthen the country, regional and global genomic surveillance systems. So it's thinking about how we can embed pathogen monitoring <laughs> within broader surveillance systems identify opportunities to strengthen capacity, so the capacity building, and critically bring together different partners in, in helpful collaborations to work on a common vision. The second document I'd like to mention is around, or in fact, it's a series of documents, is around human genome editing. This work was carried out over the last couple of years and produced both a framework for governance and a set of recommendations. So it's really the WHO has produced this document thinking about governance considerations for gene editing um, and, of course, recognizing tremendous potential for somatic human genome editing 
and thinking about what needs to be done in terms of government structure to build the right environment to promote, obviously, uh, safe and, and uh, appropriate to gene editing, but also equitable access and what that means. So we document there are several governance considerations. There's also an accompanying position paper, which has a series of recommendations, starting from the need of leadership by WHO and its director general, but going through having international collaboration through the need for human genome editing registries, uh, international research, uh, intellectual property considerations, and so on, and of course, ethical values and principles. I'd also like to mention the Pathogen Genome Data Sharing document, which is a recent document, just came out, I would say, a month or so ago, with the, the WHO Guiding Principles for Pathogen Genome Data Sharing. So what we've seen is during previous uh, public health emergencies of international concerns is that there are a series of issues around data and data sharing. And the different issues related to genome sequences, epidemiological data, um, clinical trials of experimental products, for example, diagnostics, the sharing of biological materials. And there's a lot of issues that, that really were coming to the surface. And uh, following it also in, in the wake of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, it was really important for WHO to establish some guiding principles. This document is aimed at technical staff at public health agencies, but also researchers that are involved in the prevention and control of epidemic and epidemic and uh, pandemic diseases. And the considerations are both for those who generate data, but also those who actually use and operate with the data that is being shared. The principles apply to pathogen genome dating share in, sharing in the context of epidemics and pandemics. And I think it's important to highlight that because it's really thinking about these specific instances. So it's really thinking about that rapid public sharing of pathogen genome data. Um, and, um, and we have a series of guiding principles I won't go through them in detail, but you can really see that there are many considerations going from capacity de uh, development through to the acknowledgement and the intellectual credit to, to those who share the data, um, the openness of data, um, as open as possible and as close as necessary, as indicated, transparency, the consistency with applicable law and ethical regulations through to compliance and enforcement. So I do encourage those who may be interested to consult this document, which of course, all of the documents are freely available on the Debater website. The final document I'd like to mention is the Global Guidance Framework for the Responsible Use of Life Sciences. And the subtitle is really Mitigating Biological Risks and Governing Dual Use Research. This document was launched last year, it was finalized. It was about two and a half years in the development. And it's in the recognition of rapid technological changes and innovations, not only in life sciences, but also in convergent areas that obviously can have transformational opportunities for global health, but they're not completely devoid of risks. And these may include safety and security risks. Also technologies and ease of access, they can be more widely accessed to their different actors. Um, and uh, different types of researchers in different contexts. And there's a, there was a very obvious gap in the governance uh, uh, for biological risks that could be stemming from life sciences research. So it was in this context that the document was developed. This document has a six step approach to considering life sciences research in convergent areas. It is directed to different stakeholders. So there are different sections one is, for example, for national authorities. Another section is for scientists and researchers. There's another sector for section for the private sector and so on and so forth. The six step approach is the same, but we've tried to tailor it so that different audiences can actually consult the documentation and hopefully try and find the information that is most relevant to them. Key considerations that really underscore the framework is that the governance of bio-risks is a global issue and impacts all countries around the world. There's clearly no one-size-fits-all approach in, in the governance framework that needs to have to be implemented, and countries will have to have different starting points in context. 
And there are some common values and principles that can guide decision making. Ultimately, the science division, of course, promotes healthy, vibrant, dynamic, and diverse research. Uh, and hopefully, this framework will encourage such uh, research, um, albeit with better uh, awareness to some of the safety and security issues that can arise. Finally, then, just a word of introduction to the Science Council. As I mentioned at the beginning, this the, the role of science within the World Health Organization has been highlighted by our current Director General, Dr. Tedros. And in parallel to the creation of the science division, he wanted to be advised by a high level science council. So the council was established in April 2021 to essentially provide guidance on the science and research strategy of the organization. This is a photo of not all of the members, but several members who were in Geneva last summer and uh, met, of course, with our Director General. So as I said, the Science Council reports to the WHO Director General in an advisory role. The Secretariat, which sits within the Science Division, supports the function of the Science Council and creates that liaison. So although the Science Council reports to the DG, a very functional um, and I would say almost daily link is with the Chief Scientist and the Science Council Secretariat. The members have a two year term, which is renewable. We have a chair and a co-chair. We do try to aim to have as much as possible a discipline, gender and geographical balance. We have a maximum number of 15 members that are as per our terms of reference. So we do have mechanisms, given the relatively limited number of actual Science Council members, we have mechanisms through consultations and other types of meetings to be able to draw in much vaster expertise that can uh, support the Science Council's work. Um, quickly, the Science Council really works on, on thinking about current and new areas in science and technology that WHO needs to consider and that can have potential for direct or indirect impact on global health um, and essentially providing strategic orientation to WHO's actions in science research and innovation. And this is a snapshot of the 11 members. The council was originally established with nine members, including Professor Varmas as our inaugural chair. And uh, I suspect it was now a few months ago that we added two additional members. So we now have 11 members. And with that, thank you very much. Um, I'll leave, uh, Harold, I'll leave you to go into the details of the report. So thank you very much. And uh, thank you again for the invitation. It was a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Anand.